I guess a sort of similar question, because the next section you go into is Universal Bishop of oh, St. Gregory the Great on page 106. Let me ask you this. So, of course, there's the Universal Bishop controversy that has been talked about a lot in these discussions. So, basically, where do you uh, fall on that? Do you agree? Here's a question, too. Do, would you agree with sort of Demapocalypse's uh, paper that came out a few years ago? about the universal bishop controversy, essentially. Basically, uh, the the view that St. Pope Gregory the Great is denouncing is more or less the modern Catholic position at Vatican I. Yeah, I, 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 I know a lot of Roman Catholics say, no, 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 he's talking about something else. But ultimately, yes, that's exactly what he's denouncing. This is where, again, this is a critique of it, is that he refused to be called universal, even though they granted wanted to grant him the honor. So, and he refused to take it because he said, if there's one universal head, then if he falls, the whole church goes with him. And this is exactly why Roman Catholics have to have the, the doctrine of infallibility, because if the Pope falls, the whole church goes down with him. And this is exactly why they developed it. And so it's, it's precisely that the thing he's talking about is not allowed. But it also goes back to St. Cyprian a little bit. There's no bishop of bishops. In other words, the, the Pope doesn't or no, is not a bishop of all the earth. as an immediate bishop of fiscal jurisdiction everywhere. He can ordain someone anywhere. He can, he can walk in and celebrate the Eucharist and push the other bishop out of a side because he's actually the, the bishop sort of thing. Yeah, and I think this is exactly what St. Gregory is, is, is going against, this sort of idea of it. Um, and, and I think people don't quite appreciate it enough. There is a reason why the, the emperor is called the ecumenical councils. And this is one of the problems that the ecumenical patriarch is facing now, is that no bishop could order all the other bishops into council. Because if he could, then if that council spoke heresy, then the whole church would have officially agreed to heresy and it, and it ceased to be the rock of St. Peter, according to the faith. Whereas if an emperor calls it and because it's not all what bishops actually turn up, <laughs> if, if it makes a mistake, then it's on the emperor's head and stuff, and it's just it's those bishops involved in trouble, but the church doesn't fall with it. This is why afterwards you've got all this research patriarch and each patriarch has to accept the council and stuff and, and confirm it as being truly a council, even though the council, if, if it is true, is complete at the council. The, 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 it's not something like afterwards that it comes true. It's true at the council, but they're affirming it the truth is actually that it hasn't spoken falsely. So that shows two things, that the, the council could speak falsely <laughs> and that there was no guarantee. So, but there's this idea that you cannot have the one head because the whole church can go down. There. And I think Roman Catholics basically accept that's why they have to have the Pope as sort of infallible to, to prevent that happening. I think people are not quite know that well enough. And the other thing, St. Gregory, I, I like to pull out is he recognises the triple patriarchy, see, that there is one patriarchy seen in three bishops that it's Rome, Alexandria, and Antioch are the one patrine sea, uh, each the sea of Peter, which means they're each the, the rock, they're each stable, they're each so on, you know, for forever, they, they each have the rights of Peter. Rome is first among them, and mm. in a sense is the type of what they are, in a sense. They, they model themselves on Rome in, in, in many ways in the, in this, uh, to, to keep the singularity of them so we don't have three Churches going off, but at the same time they're slightly truncated, so that if one of them falls, the whole church doesn't go down. That the, the church can be united around the other patrine see as uh, as such, and you can see this in the fact that the Pope never ordained the other patriarchs. They are all self ordained, and their own synods ordained them. So that there was never a sense with the Bishop of Rome until post schism ordained all the bishops. This was not allowed either, again, because if that had happened, if he goes into heresy, the whole church would be in, as a, or just, <laughs> would fall with him. So, again, you're protecting this by spreading it out to allow human weakness, human fallibility to take place. So, we, so in the sense of rejection that man can be controlled so such by God that he can always speak without error. In any case, it doesn't mean it's not the grace of God that helps people to be inspired and to speak about error, but there's no guarantee because it works with the freedom of the recipient. 
And so if the if the freedom is used badly, then there's no guarantee just because you're in an office <laughs> that you, you will not be a, become a heresy or speak heresy. So this was a deliberate design in the church, which, which again, Roman Catholic has twisted from the distorted from its early things, which is, again, why you don't have a universal church or one sort of magisterium around this whole idea. That's not what we see in the first millennium. So Gregory is actually sort of a proponent. So while he's very strong in the place of the papacy, he also recognizes that the Patreon C in three. Yeah, I like to point out that the Roman Orthodox Church actually still has those two. And if you take the understanding of Rome, New Rome, a Constantinople is New Rome, and it's really very important to understand it as New Rome. Therefore, it carries us equal privileges of old Rome. The, the privileges of Rome have never left the Orthodox Church either. They just continue in New Rome. And so nothing of that was present in the church as far as Rome, Alexandria, and Antioch, the Patron Seas, as the actual authority has been lost. Yes, old Rome as such has separated from the church from the Orthodox perspective, but nothing of the privileges, the meaning, the, the center of union, the Petrine quality has, has left the Orthodox church. It, it still continues to this day. So, yeah, that's just building on St. Gregory the Great. So. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that, Father. So I guess I have two questions. Usually what I hear responded to to arguments like this, the Catholic side, is these two arguments. Usually they'll say, and I know when you've debated, Eric Ybarra makes this argument in his article that he wrote a while ago on uh, St. Pope Gregory the Great and the Universal Bishop controversy. Uh, basically him and others, uh, other Catholic apologists, will say that um, in Pope St. Gregory's mind, Universal was sort of being referred to where there's only one bishop at all and there's no other bishops at all and so that he would basically be this subsumed bishop and he's protecting the episcopacy of the other bishops but he still believes essentially a, a catholic view of primacy but he doesn't want to say that he's interpreting universal as to sort of negate any other bishops where it's just like the bishop of rome and then also the second objection is usually they'll cite from saint pope gregory the great who can doubt that constantinople is subject to the the holy see or something along those lines and that Rome had authority, jurisdictional authority over Constantinople. So how would you respond to those objections? Because those are pretty much the common, the most common ones I've seen. Yeah, well, the first one is it's precisely the things of Rome now, which is when I talk about the Pope and the Bishop standing, coming together in the same place, and who do you follow? The, the, if you say that the Pope does that, the very fact that the Pope rule has priority over the Bishop is denial of the Bishop as Bishop. The, the, the bishop as a bishop is a singular voice of consent, mm -hmm. service, and, and any ecclesiastical um, function within the, his diocese. He is a singular. As soon as another voice stands in and says something different, that you are denying the bishop as bishop. And this is making the singular bishop. So, so this idea of this universal direct follow where you can sort of ordain anyone you like, wherever you like, et cetera, and, and you have one voice is doing exactly what St. Gregory is <laughs> goddamn because the, the point of the bishop is a singular voice. It, it's a singular will that is the point of union in the sense of the church, of the thing it's, it's, it's on the round of consent and it needs one voice, one one mind, one one will. And as soon as you add something else, you, you immediately deny him being bishop. And so I think that does that. Now, the other point again was that, yes, constant, Again, one Rome, if we can't have two churches, we can't have two heads in a sense where you, you end up dividing a church to two. Now, this was a problem once Constantinople became New Rome, that it, it was liable to sort of split the church in East and Western churches. And uh, sadly, in a sense, it did split that. But if you read the canons, uh, Constantinople was always second after Rome. In other words, Rome was the type, and it still was thus the singular center of communion as such. And Constantinople was under that as well, was, was to defer to that. So even if it was equal, it still deferred to that. So the way Constantinople comes ahead now, it had, it had all the same authorities and powers, but it's only able to be taken first place totally now because there's no old Rome. But if all Rome comes back, it needs to come second after that. It needs to take a set of a bow to to the priority of old Rome. 
And so this is how I'd understand that jurisdiction. It's not, again, it's a distortion of authority, meaning I can tell you to do whatever I want, whenever you want, to an authority being you'd still need to respect my first place. You need to defer to, to that. You're not going into contradiction with the see of Rome just for the sake of contradiction. I mean, obviously, you can, you can stand up against it if it's, you think it's going to the heresy. <laughs> but, but otherwise, you, you, you follow the way of Rome like everybody else. And I think that's important for the unity of churches. So that's how I'd interpret it.